Hi guys, hello, welcome to my channel. September is officially over, so it is time to pick our October TBR, and I am extra excited for this one because it's October. It's the start of spooky season, so I wanted to do something a little special, do a little bit of like a trick or treat style TBR pick. I recently came across another booktuber named Brianna Marie. I'll have her channel and her video that I got this idea from linked down below. And I'm basically going to be copycatting exactly what she did in her video. Essentially, she used a number wheel to kind of pick her books blindly, but then she also added some prompts before each spin of the wheel to kind of give you other options potentially of other ways to pick a number. For example, things like an even number. So I would basically spin the wheel until I got an even number. But then also there's a couple of challenges prompts in here as well. So for example, annotating whatever book I end up picking or reading 100 pages a day for that book. And I'm not gonna lie, literally every single prompt in this jar, except for like maybe one or two of them came directly from Brianna's videos. So that's kind of what we're doing. Let's get started. Let's pick this one. <laughs> okay, so this one says binge this book. So essentially whatever number book our wheel picks, I'm gonna have to basically just grab, sit down, and read all the way through until it's done, which that is my honestly my favorite way to read books. So very excited about this. So here is our number wheel and we do have 31 books total on our little TBR shelf. They're all books that I would be interested in reading for spooky season, specifically October. So you know a couple of like spookier kind of romances, a lot of horror, some thrillers, things like that. So let's see which book we are going to be binging. That sound effect was kind of creepy. Our first number is number nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh no. <laughs> this is probably the one book that first of all is gonna be kind of hard to binge. And then second of all is like the one book on this entire cart that I kind of only put on here just because I have had it for a while and I wanna get it off my cart, but I'm kind of scared that I'm not gonna like it. But this is The Witches of New York by Amy McKay. I mean, it does sound interesting, but it kind of gives me like literary fiction-y type of vibes. I don't know if it actually is, but that's the kind of vibe it gives me. And as we know, if you've been following my channel for a little bit, uh, historically that has been like the worst genre for me. So I'm a little nervous about this one, but this one takes place in 1880. It says, seances are the entertainment of choice in exclusive social circles and many enterprising women, some possessed of true intuitive powers, some gifted with the art of performance, find work as mediums. At their humble tea shop, Tea and Sympathy, Adelaide and Eleanor provide a place for whispering confessions, secret cures, and spiritual assignations. I don't know what that word means. <laughs> for a select society of ladies who speak the right words and ask the right questions. And basically they put out an ad for a girl. Beatrice answers the ad and apparently has great spiritual gifts. So I should like this. Hopefully, hopefully we like this. I mean, we do have to binge it after all. So if I don't like it, I guess it'll be over quickly. So there is that one. I'm gonna put my little tag there as my bookmark. There's our first little book for October TBR, which by the way, I don't know how many I'm gonna pick exactly. I think I'm just gonna like go with the flow of what we grab, you know? Pick number two. Let's go with this one. I'm literally so excited. I love doing the prompt jar just like regularly, but because this one's a little bit different, I'm like extra excited. <laughs> uh, so this one says, okay, again, I totally copycatted all of these prompts except for a couple of them. And these first two are funny enough, the ones that I actually made myself. And honestly, this one is one that I don't know if it's gonna actually work out. So I'm only gonna give myself three different spins on the wheel for it to succeed. And if it doesn't, then we'll just scrap it and move on. So this one says odd number and then flip. So essentially I need to spin the wheel until I get an odd number and then I'm gonna flip the numbers around. So say it's 13, it'll turn into 31. There's only so many like flippable odd numbers within 31 books, you know? So we'll see how this goes. So we have our wheel, let's do attempt number one. I'm hoping this works out, but again, very likely that it won't. <laughs> okay, so our first one is 14. That doesn't count, it's not odd. Let's try to find an odd number. Got a little fur everywhere. Yeah, this is not looking good. Second one is still not even an odd number, number two. And also it's a singular number and I obviously can't flip that even if it was an odd one. <sighs> I knew it was a risk putting this in here, but all right. We're just getting only odd numbers. I'm gonna try two more, two more spins. <laughs> We're only getting singular. I mean, we finally got an odd one, but I can't flip a nine. Okay, 
Okay, we got another odd number, but again, it's 29 and I do not have 92 books. If I was doing like my full TBR, I'd be able to do that, but with this little grouping, obviously we cannot do that. Okay, so we're gonna scrap this one. That was unfortunate, but moving on. <laughs> Let's try attempt number two for our second pick. We're gonna go with this one. And this one says, boo, unlucky number 13. This one again is another one that I just kind of like threw in myself because I thought it'd be fun to have one specific to Halloween. Let's see which book that will be. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. <gasps> 13 is definitely not an unlucky number in this occasion because we have Long Live Evil. And this is one of the books that like I had in my head going into this, like even if I didn't end up picking it for my TBR, I was gonna put it on my TBR anyway. This one is about a girl who I think she dies. <laughs> Uh, okay, she doesn't actually die. It says she's dying and she seizes a second chance at living, a magical bargain that lets her enter the world of her favorite fantasy series, which in and of itself sounds so fun and cool. But when she wakes up in her favorite fantasy series, she realizes that she is the villain of the story. I cannot wait to read this. Our TBR is so polar opposite already. We have the one that I was looking forward to the least and the one that I was looking forward to the most. So let's see what pick number three will bring. I'm gonna grab this one. Uh, okay, so we have another challenge one. This one says read 100 pages a day. So literally I need to read 100 pages a day of the next book until I'm done with it. So let's see what the wheel will have us reading. Number one, it looks like. Yep, number one. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is the only nonfiction that I have on this entire thing. And of course we ended up picking it, but I'm actually really excited. I'm not typically a big nonfiction reader, but this one I think should be really interesting. I started another nonfiction by the same author last October and I just recently finished it. So that definitely does not bode well for me actually finishing this book this month, but we're gonna try our best because we do have our challenge prompt. Maybe I'll do like a video of me completing these challenges. Let me know in the comments if that would be something that you guys would be interested in, like a reading vlog of that. But anyway, basically the author of this book is a mortician and the first book that I read from her, Smoke Gets in Your Eyes, I believe that's what it's called. That one was basically like a collection memoir style of some like short stories of her time as a cremator operator, which was like her first job into death. I don't know what that would be called. And this book is actually based off of her travels, kind of like traveling the world and learning about other cultures way of handling death. And I just think that sounds really interesting and obviously very appropriate for October. So I'm excited also too, extra excited now because I kind of been flipping through this and there's pictures. I love a good illustration in a book. Now let's pick prompt number four. And we're gonna go with this one. Good grief. I'm literally pulling all of the challenges. I was hoping to only get like one, but apparently we're picking them all because I'm pretty sure I only put three in here and here's our third one. And this one says annotate this book. So we need to annotate this next book. Let's see what number we get. I don't know how much I'm gonna wanna annotate a horror book, you know? <laughs> uh, number 18, squish these over, make sure I'm counting right. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Uh, this is Murder Your Employer by Rupert Holmes. And this is basically about some students that go to a school where you learn how to murder people. From Edgar winning novelist and playwright Rupert Holmes comes a thriller with a killer concept, the McMaster's Conservatory for the Applied Arts, a luxurious clandestine college dedicated to the fine art of murder. And then it says, who hasn't wondered what the world would be like if a person who is the object of your affliction ceased to exist? And then basically the synopsis says that we're gonna be following three specific students. And Kevin actually read this book last year and he did say that it followed them outside of the school. So it's not just them being in the school the entire book. It kind of follows them after they graduate as well. And I'm assuming they're gonna commit the murders. I don't know. Again, I don't know how much I'm gonna want to like annotate a thriller, but we'll see how it goes. Now let's pick our fifth one. And I definitely think I'm gonna do more than five because this is just entirely too fun. So <laughs> uh, let's go with this one. 
And this one says, you pick. I'm actually really excited about this one. This is another one that I added myself. I guess I added a lot more myself than I thought I did. The whole concept between this one is that you are going to be picking a number for me. So I'm gonna have the wheel spin two different numbers and then I'm gonna post them on Instagram and probably also the community tab because I definitely get a lot more responses quicker on the community tab than I do with Instagram. But I am still gonna put it on both, just kind of like cover my bases. But uh, yeah, we're basically gonna spin the wheel twice, have the wheel pick two different numbers, and then you guys are gonna pick between those two numbers. I hope that made sense. So let's go ahead and spin our wheel and see what our first of two choices are going to be. Okay, we got 31, but I already don't have 31 anymore on our shelf, so we're gonna have to re-spin that. <laughs> Uh, which I guess I'm gonna have to kind of like keep in mind I can't go under or over a certain number okay so we have number six as our second spin uh, but kind of to like finish my thought process uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do seven or more books so I don't think I'm gonna be able to go over we'll say 24 just kind of like be safe maybe 23 24 let's see what the second one even is before I like think too hard on this <laughs> it's not gonna be an issue. Our second one is number 10, and I already forgot our first one. I'm not joking when I say I have like the worst memory. I gotta add little sparkles, because I always do. <laughs> Polls are up on Instagram and on YouTube. So we're gonna go ahead and let that sit for a while. Honestly, I'm probably gonna have to come back a little bit later today in like a few hours or so, just to kind of like give enough time for people to vote. So let's go ahead and pick our sixth prompt. I think I'm gonna at least do seven. Honestly, I kind of wanna just do all of these because I'm so excited for them. And maybe we will do that. I don't know. I'm kind of like down to have a really big TBR for October because last year I feel like I had all these plans and I bought a ton of books and I barely made a dent in those books and those plans. So this year I kind of want to like make up for it. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and see. Okay, so this one says an odd number. So we just have to spin the wheel until we get an odd number. Should be simple enough. Sounds like old creaky wood. Number 12, that is not an odd number. Spin again. <laughs> 18, we were so close to getting 19. <laughs> Spin again. <laughs> Let's get an odd number, please. Okay, well now we have 31, but we don't have 31 books. I guess I could just like keep going around until I hit 31. We're gonna do that, because I wanna spin again. <laughs> Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. Ooh, okay, I'm excited for this one. This is The Cotton Candy Massacre by Christopher Robertson. And first of all, does this not have the coolest cover. Uh, this is essentially one of a few slashers that I bought last year. I don't remember her name, so I'll put it on the screen, but I watched one of her book hauls last year before October and she had purchased a bunch of slashers and I literally bought every single one of them. <laughs> and the idea was that I was going to read them last October and obviously I did not get around to that. So we're gonna do that this year. This one says, the book you are about to read is an account of the tragedy that occurred at the reopening of Bonkin's Bonanza one day in the summer of 1989, which is actually a random reason why I like slasher movies and things like that. They always take place in like the 80s and 90s, which is when I was born and when I grew up. So I just think it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Some came looking for fun, like Candy Barton and her best friend, Lee. Others, like Rocky Rhodes and Sully Sullivan, came looking for a second chance. Instead, they would find a twisted funfetti nightmare. And I'm assuming that there's gonna be like a killer clown at this carnival, and I'm excited about it. Clowns are definitely one of those things that I am specifically not a fan of. And I have decided because we only have four more left in here, I'm just gonna do them all. Why not, you know? So let's pick our next one. This one says an even number. We just spun an odd number and now we're spinning an even one. And those spins that we've been getting, this should be pretty quick. Cause I feel like we've gotten way more even numbers than odd. So crossing our fingers, we don't have to spin a bunch of times. <laughs> Okay, number nine. I thought I was gonna land on 10. So we got an odd number, of course. So let's spin again. For 
the love of Pete. We got one. Let's spin again. <sighs> I should have known that was gonna happen. Okay, we got number 28. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. This will be a fun one. So this is Tiny Nightmares, and this is basically a collection of very short tales of horror. The little synopsis says, in this playful, inventive collection, leading literary and horror writers spin chilling tales in only a few pages. Each slim, fast-moving story brings to life the kind of monsters readers love to fear, from broken-hearted vampires to uber-taking serial killers and mind-reading witches. But what also makes Tiny Nightmares so blood-curdling and unforgettable are the real-world horrors that writers such as Samantha Hunt and along a list of other people <laughs> weave into their fictions, exploring how global warming, racism, social media addiction, and homelessness are just as frightening as, say, a vampire's fangs sinking into your neck. Our advice? Read with the hall light on and the bedroom door open just a crack. <laughs> And I just saw a picture. I totally forgot this had illustrations. This is another one that I bought last year. Pretty much all of these books I bought last year. This should definitely be an interesting read. And let's pull our next prompt. I don't know why I'm shuffling this around so much because like I said, I think I'm just gonna do all of them. So it doesn't matter which one I pick next. Ooh, okay. Well, this one is gonna be kind of like irrelevant. This is a free trade. Ooh, a free trade. I was gonna say this is kind of irrelevant because we're doing all of the prompts, but this doesn't really have to do with the prompts. I could essentially trade out one of these books and spin the wheel again and try to get something different. And honestly, the one that I'm kind of like the least excited for is this one, especially because I have to annotate it. So we're gonna go ahead and spin the wheel and see what we could potentially trade uh, murder your employer for. So number 25. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. 25 is a chunky one. <laughs> this is Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth. This one also has illustrations. I didn't realize so many of these books had pictures in them. I'm realizing just now that I've never actually flipped through this book before. There's a ton of pictures in here, actually. There's one where she's like in a bathtub. I think, I think we're gonna switch it out. I'm gonna be annotating Plain Bad Heroines. I still wanna read Murder Your Employer for sure. But as far as like the whole annotation process, I would rather annotate this, especially too, because it's like a floppy paperback, whereas this is like a stiff hardcover. And I feel like that would just literally be physically harder to do. That's what we're gonna do. I've made my decision. <laughs> We have two more prompts left. So second to last prompt. Let's see what we have. This one says, sister picks. We have 25 books left. So I'm gonna go ahead and just send my sister like a voice message, kind of explaining what's going on and ask her to pick between one and 25. Hi, Kenny. <laughs> I'm filming my TBR jar video right now, but I'm doing it a little bit differently. And I'm basically having prompts to kind of like pick numbers to help me pick books blindly. I don't know if that makes sense, but basically one of the prompts is for you to pick a number for me. So I need you to pick a number between one and 25. Please and thank you. Message has been sent to my sister, but while we wait for her to respond, let's go ahead and just do our very last little prompt in our jar. So this is spin for an even number and then divide it by two. This is definitely one that I copycatted and the one that I based my odd number one off of because I wanted to do one for an odd number as well, but as we know, that didn't work out very well, which is probably why, honestly, the original creator of this prompt did not do one for an odd number because it was kind of difficult. <laughs> but anyway, let's go ahead and do our very last spin for this video. And again, we need to get an even number. And we're getting one, I think, right off the bat. Nope, just kidding. I thought it was gonna be 30, it's 31. <laughs> spin again. I literally keep getting the complete opposite of what I need. All right, our last number is 20. So divided by two, that gives us 10, easy peasy. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, and that is my sister. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. I am so excited. This is another one that was at the very, very top of my list of my like hopefuls to get for this video. We have Here Lies a Vengeful Bitch by Cody Crowley. And this just sounds like it's gonna be so, so much fun. This one is about a girl named Annie Lane that was really crunchy. <laughs> anyway, this one is about a girl named Annie Lane who gets murdered. The mountain her body was dumped on is legendary for raising the dead. So after waking up in the same frigid waters that hides her corpse, Annie surges into her backwoods hometown hellbent on revenge. The problem is Annie can't remember who killed her and the list of people who might have wanted to isn't exactly short. This sounds like a lot of fun. Very excited about it. 
All right, there is that book and those are all of our prompts, but we do still have to kind of like follow up with a couple of other ones. Let's go ahead and do the one that you guys chose first. So on Instagram, we have 52% of you guys are voting for number 10. Well, <laughs> maybe putting it on two different platforms was a mistake because 55% um, of you on YouTube, on the community tab, said number six. So we literally have opposite answers. 23 people voted on Instagram as of right now and 62 voted on the community tab on YouTube. So because there's more votes on YouTube, I think we're gonna go with that, that answer. So we're gonna do number six. I am so sorry for anyone who voted on Instagram and feels like your vote was for nothing. I am so, so sorry. Next time I'm just gonna pick a platform. For some reason I was not expecting that to be different. This one keeps messing me up because it's so skinny. Let's poke that out a little bit more. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so this one, which is actually a book that I bought a few months ago and I have been really, really excited to read it at some point. And I feel like October is a really good time. So this is The Book of Lost Things by John Connolly. And this one is basically about a boy who kind of has a rough home life and he basically escapes through reading, but it kind of hints at Either he has like a really, really vivid imagination and his books are coming to life or they actually are. Angry and alone, he finds refuge in his imagination and soon finds that reality and fantasy have begun to meld. While his family falls apart around him, David is violently propelled into a world that is a strange reflection of his own, populated by heroes and monsters and ruled by a fated king who keeps his secrets in a mysterious book the book of lost things. Yeah, so I don't know if this is real or imaginary or whatever, but either way, it sounds like it's gonna be a lot of fun. I did get this in the thriller section, but it does also seem to have some sort of element of fantasy to it. And I don't think I've ever read like a book that mixes those two genres together. So I'm very, very intrigued by this book. And then last, but certainly not least, we have my sister's pick and she did text me back and uh, she picked number 15. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 15. This is another one that I was going to add to my TBR if I didn't end up picking it in this video. Our last book is Gothicana by Runix and it says a tale of dark romance but it also has kind of like a dark academia vibe and again those are two kind of like genres that I've never really seen mixed together before and I'm very intrigued. This one if I remember correctly is basically about a student who gets accepted into this mysterious university that's basically in a castle and there's like a romance between her and one of the professors. So I think there's gonna be a little bit of an age gap. And then kind of like skimming through the synopsis, there's speak of dangers about the castle and then a mystery to solve. So I don't know exactly what's gonna go on in this book. I kind of wanna go into it a little bit more blind, but very excited about this book. And with that, here is our TBR for October. As a little recap, we have The Witches of New York, Long Live Evil, From Here to Eternity, which I'm realizing now I don't know if I ever said the title of this book when I was talking about it. Plain Bad Heroines, The Cotton Candy Massacre, Tiny Nightmares, Here Lies a Vengeful Bitch, The Book of Lost Things, and Gothicana. There's definitely a lot of other ones on this cart that I want to read as well. Uh, specifically, we have like Never Whistle at Night. I definitely wanna get to, we have a couple more slashers that I wanna get to. The Deep by Nick Cutter would be a good one. I got this for Christmas from a friend and I've been kind of like saving it for October. So I kind of want to read this one. This one, if I need something like light and fluffy in the middle of the month to kind of like break up all the, the spooky vibes, we have The Love of My Afterlife. This is another book that I got for Christmas from a friend that I think could be really fun and very seasonally appropriate, like a fun kind of like Halloween read. We have The Accidental Medium. And then these two are more that I bought last year that I was really, really excited for and I just never got around to them. We have Slewfoot by Brom. He's got several other books and the illustrations in these books are so, so stunning. And then we have Mary, An Awakening of Terror by Nat Cassidy. I feel like this one is recommended by a lot of people that like read horror. This was like at the top of my list to read last year and I just literally never read it. So I definitely want to read it this year. Kevin is currently reading it now. So I'm going to have to wait until he's done with it. Ooh, another one. <laughs> I'm basically just like dismantling this entire shelf. But another one that I really wanna read this year is We Sold Our Souls by Grady Hendrix. I read quite a few of his books last year. I actually did a reading vlog on it. <laughs> and this book, if I remember correctly, I got for Black Friday last year. I think the author only opens up his website to like buy signed copies of his books like once a year or something like that. So I jumped on the opportunity because the books were not priced any different than a regular hardcover. And he wrote like a special message in it and everything. So highly recommend keep your eyes open and then the last one that i'm kind of like more pressed or hopeful to like get to in october is dark room etiquette this one is basically about a teenager who gets kidnapped and is trapped in someone's basement and it just kind of like follows him through being trapped in a basement it sounds like it's going to be super creepy and it's probably going to be one that is going to actually scare me so <laughs> I, 
I'm interested to read it. That is all of the books on my TBR and that I'm hoping to kind of get to in October. Honestly, there's so many other ones, but like, you know, realistically, I'm probably not gonna get through everything I just showed you, but we'll see how it goes. Let me know in the comments down below what you're planning on reading in October and if we're gonna be twins, if we're reading anything similar, that would be really fun. Anyway, that is everything that I have for this video. I hope you guys have slash have had the most amazing of days and I will hopefully see you in the next one. Bye.